Hello everybody, and welcome to another SFML tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll explain to you how to create a window in SFML. So first things first, why do we need a window? Well, right now you've probably only been working in a console window, which is uh, this thing that just appeared. So it simply contains text and nothing else, only text. But what if you want something with images? What if you want something to actually show a player character that's moving around around the world? Well, then we need something different, something that actually can handle images. So for that, SFML has created a render window. SFML has made it really easy for us to create a window and to manage a window. But first things first, the constructor of the window. We're going to call SF, which is the namespace for SFML, and then a render window. We need to give it a name, just window. And then what you would see is that there are four different constructor types. The one that we're interested in is the one with SF video mode as first parameter. Let's create an SF video mode. What does the video mode contain? The video mode basically contains the width and the height of the window. Let's specify a uh, width for a window and let's specify a height for a window. Let's say, for instance, 512 by 512. The next thing that we can give a window is a name. So whatever we want on the top of the screen. So let's give it a name. Let's, for instance, say SFML tutorial. The next thing that we can give it is a style. But what are styles? Well, the styles are basically, if you look at a window, everything that you can see. The minimize button, that's part of the style. The maximize button, part of the style. The close button, part of the style. And even resizing the window is also part of the style. And in SFML, you can modify yourself what you want the user to be able to do. There are a few different styles in SFML. We can see the different styles if we type in SF style. And then inside of this namespace, you have all the different styles that you have. So you have close, so whether or not it has a close button, Default, which is basically a wrapper for close, resize, and title bar. Full screen, so whether or not the window is in full screen mode. None, so basically the window can't do anything. We can't resize it, we can't close it using the X button, and we can maximize it. Resize, so whether or not we should be able to resize our window. And title bar, so if this window should have a title bar. Normally, it will always pass in the default, basically close, resize, and title bar. But we can also give it ourselves ourselves. So for instance, let's say we only want the player to be able to close the window and see the title bar, but not resize the window because we want to have a specific size for the window. Well, we can do that. Let's actually do that right now. What we need to do is we need to go to this parameter, the third one, which need an SF UN32 style, and then we can pass in SF style close, and then using a single stripe down, which you might know from the OR, which is a double stripe down, we can pass multiple things in as one. This is called a bitwise OR, and I'll explain more about that in my C++ tutorials. And using this, we can also pass in an SF, an SF style for title bar. So now it's time to create the game loop. Since if we now run this code, it will simply open a window and instantly close it, because we never specified a game loop. So in order to create a game loop, we need to create a while loop within there, a statement window that is open. And basically what this will do if you just run it, is give us a window that we can't move, so I can't move it off of my face. That's because they haven't specified events. Right now I'm just going to step through the basics that we need for the events, and in the next episode I'm going to explain to you what all the different events are. So in order to make it so we can move the window, we need to create another while loop. Within there, window.pullEvent. And what pull event needs, as you can see, is an SF event. So we need to create an SF event. Uh, called EVNT, or whatever you want, but don't call it event, because event is a reserved keyword. If I just type in event, you will see that it will light up blue. That's because it's already used by C++. So now we can pass in the EVNT, which is an event. And the side of here, there's one thing that we always need to do, is check whether or not we should close the window. Since there's one event that is as an event closed, that's basically what we call it whenever we hit the X button or hit Alt F4. It's basically, whenever we try to close the window, we need to handle it ourselves. So the window will not close automatically. It will just give us a sign like, hey, I want to close. Could you please do that for me? So we need to create an if statement. If evnt.type is equal to evnt.close, then what we want to do is we want to call window.close. Now if we run the program again, you will see that we have a window, which is still completely white, that we can move around. So we can drag it around, but we cannot resize it, because we specified 
that we did not want to resize. We only want to be able to close it and see the title bar. Now let me show you how it will look if we can resize it but remove the title bar. In order to do that, we simply remove title bar and change it to resize. So now we're able to resize the window, but we shouldn't be able to see the title bar. Okay, we're still able to see the title bar, but we are now in fact able to resize the window. What you will see is something a little weird with the white box and the black box next to it. That's because we're not clearing the screen, we're not drawing anything to it, so it will always just be the default color. So if we just drag it around, you will see that if we if you make it smaller, then the white box, which is uncleared before, will now change into something that is cleared, which is uh, by default a black color. But we're going to learn about that more in a later episode, where we're actually going to draw something to the screen. That was basically it for this episode. In the next episode, I'm going to talk to you about the different events that you have. So thanks for watching, and see you next time.